Hi, I'm Bryce. Welcome to CompSci 321. This class is called Analysis of Algorithms, and our textbook is called Algorithm Design. So in this video, I want to give you a sense of what we mean by algorithm design and analysis. This definition that an algorithm is a well-defined computational procedure that takes some input and produces some output comes from another popular algorithms textbook and has a few parts that I'd like to emphasize. When we say that an algorithm is well-defined, in this class that means that we will write pseudocode to precisely specify the steps of an algorithm. In general, we write algorithms to solve some sort of problem, and so when we talk about the input to an algorithm, that's the problem instance that we're operating on, and the output of the algorithm is a solution to that instance of the problem. And when we say that an algorithm produces some output, that means to be considered an algorithm, a computational procedure must halt. So examples of well-defined computational procedures could include many things that you have implemented in code before, like quicksort, but sorting is not an algorithm. Sorting is a type of problem that the quicksort algorithm could solve. But we also include in this definition many things that you might not have thought of as algorithms because you haven't written them in code before, such as long division, where in grade school you probably learned a well-defined sequence of steps to solve the problem of division. So throughout the semester we will be focusing on designing algorithms and analyzing algorithms. We'll learn about algorithm design through many examples of common algorithms, and we'll also discuss a number of design techniques for developing new algorithms. When we think about analyzing algorithms, our goals will be to prove the correctness of our algorithms and describe their running time. In addition to designing and analyzing algorithms, we will also analyze many of the problems for which we are writing algorithms. And throughout the semester, this will include looking for connections between related problems and ways that we can transform instances of one problem into another. And especially towards the end of the semester, we will analyze the difficulty of various problems in terms of whether there can exist an efficient algorithm to solve it. Next, I'd like to talk about our approach to solving problems in this class. In general, if we're trying to write an algorithm to solve some problem, the first step is to carefully formulate the problem. This means specifying precisely what are the inputs, what does a problem instance look like, and what are the outputs, what does a solution look like. If we take the familiar problem of sorting as our example, then our input is a list of numbers, and our output is a list of the same numbers in ascending order. As we go through the semester, this step of carefully formulating the problem will become more and more important as the problems that we are solving become more complicated. Once we have a precise specification of the problem, we should work on designing an algorithm to solve the problem, and then once we have a candidate algorithm, we should analyze that algorithm. But when we're working on the design and analyze steps, 
we should always be thinking of these two steps as being iterative. We'll design a draft of an algorithm and we'll analyze that, and then we'll try to improve our algorithm and analyze our updated version. And when we're designing an algorithm, it's a very good idea to start with the simplest possible thing we can think of. So, if we're trying to solve the problem of sorting, and we're trying to begin with a stupid simple algorithm, some ideas might be to just randomly reorder the list and then check whether it's sorted. And we could write pseudocode for this algorithm idea, but before we make it precise, we could start to think about what is the analysis going to look like. And in terms of analysis, the first thing we want to ask is, is this an algorithm? Is this always going to give us an output? And if so, is it always going to give us a correct output? And with this algorithm that we've sketched so far, randomly permuting the list might not put it in sorted order. And so, if we have to repeat this many times, we don't have a guarantee that this algorithm is ever going to halt. And so, our initial analysis of this algorithm sketch tells us that either it may not be correct or it may not be guaranteed to halt. And so, we should make revisions to our idea before we go to the formalism of writing up some pseudocode. As a second, still stupid simple idea, we could try all possible orderings of the numbers. Rather than generating them at random, we could systematically go through the different permutations. And in this case, it seems like we could probably argue that this algorithm will eventually halt and will eventually give us a correct answer. But if we start to think about the running time of this algorithm, well, that's going to depend on how many different permutations might we generate. And if we think about the number of possible orderings, if there are n elements in the list, then we have n options for the first element times n minus 1 options for the second times n minus 2 options for the third. And so there are n factorial different possible orderings. And so, in the worst case, we might have to try all of them, and we have an extremely inefficient algorithm. And so our initial analysis tells us that, again, we should maybe try to improve our algorithm before we formalize it. So maybe as a third idea, we come up with the notion of finding the smallest element in the list, moving it to the front, and then repeating this procedure on the remainder of the list until we get to the end. And so if we start to think about whether this approach will work and how efficient it will be, it seems plausible that this is going to result in an efficient algorithm. And so now would be the time where it makes sense to start trying to write some pseudocode that precisely specifies our idea for an algorithm. Once we've written an algorithm, then step three is to actually work on a formal analysis of that algorithm. And as we said before, that analysis consists of two parts. First, a proof of the correctness of the algorithm. And so in proving correctness, we want to think carefully about how can we be sure that our algorithm halts? And how can we convince a skeptic that our algorithm will always give the right answer for any problem instance we might encounter. In addition to proving that our algorithm is correct, we want to analyze its runtime.
And when we think about the running time of our algorithm, that will always depend on the size of the input problem instance that we were given. And so we want to describe our running time as a function of input size, and then do big O analysis to understand the order of growth of that function. In our first class, we will actually write out the pseudocode for selection sort, and we will see how we can prove that selection sort gives us a correct answer to our sorting problem. And starting in week two, we will go into much more depth on how we can describe the running time of our algorithms and do formal big O analysis of those running time functions. But we also want to remember to iterate our steps of designing and analyzing the algorithm. So even if we have written out our pseudocode and proved its correctness, we might do a runtime analysis and determine that our selection sort runs in n squared time and think, is there some other sorting algorithm we could write that would be even more efficient? Likewise, in addition to iteratively improving the design of our algorithms, we'd like to iteratively improve our analysis by revising and updating the clarity and writing of our proofs. Throughout the semester, we will see a ton of problems where I ask you to design and analyze an algorithm for a particular task. So solving these problems involves giving a complete specification of an algorithm in pseudocode or a similarly precise description, and then analyzing the correctness and running time of the algorithm. So whenever you write an algorithm in this class, you should be prepared to prove its correctness and analyze how long it takes to run. Finally, I'd like to end this video with some general advice for success in this class. I've said this before, but it bears repeating that we want to iterate the design and analysis steps of working on our algorithms. And I really do mean for these to be two separate steps that we go back and forth between, because our designs will be improved by taking time to do careful analysis, and our analysis will be much easier if we have carefully designed our algorithms. And by iterating these steps, we can narrow in on a better solution by, for example, coming up with a first draft of an algorithm that we think works but might take a long time, and then trying to come up with variations that are more efficient. In the sorting example that I talked about before, this seemed really silly, but that's entirely okay. I want us to try out the stupid, simple ideas for algorithms first, and not be afraid that they might be dumb or that we might fail. It may have seemed ridiculous that I was proposing terrible sorting algorithms first before going on to ones that you have certainly seen before, but many times this really will be the best approach that thinking about what's the stupid, simple way to solve this problem sometimes will actually give us a great algorithm. And even when it doesn't, analyzing the stupid version and iterating will often guide us to better algorithms later. But doing this requires us to be skeptical of our own designs and our own proofs. Over the course of designing good algorithms, we're going to have to come up with several drafts that we're going to improve on, and so we always want to be thinking about, is there something else that we could do instead that would be even better? 
Likewise, when we're writing our proofs, we need to approach them skeptically and think, would this argument convince someone who doesn't yet know how this algorithm works or why it should be correct? And so because we will be iteratively improving our solutions, and because we are not afraid to fail, we should have skepticism of any given answer that our algorithm might not be fully correct, or might not be the most efficient, or that our proof might not be fully convincing and has room for improvement. And on that topic of improving our proofs, I would like you to think of writing a proof as a similar exercise to writing an essay. And the reason I draw this comparison is that when we are writing proofs, it really helps to start with an outline or a sketch of what is the reasoning of the proof before we dive into the formalism of actually writing up all the details. And in addition, just like writing an essay, our proofs can always benefit from going back and thinking through how clear was our writing, how could it be improved, and this process of iterative revision will definitely give us better results. So once again, welcome to Analysis of Algorithms. I'm really looking forward to this semester, and I'll see you in class soon.